Hello YouTube and welcome to Ground Forks. This is episode 109 of the Interplanetary Voyage of Exploration. And in the previous episode we have successfully captured an asteroid. Uh, which So I will just scrap the asteroid retriever. We don't no longer need to retrieve an asteroid. But I will rather create an asteroid mover, so to say, because we need to figure out a way how to move the asteroid in a bit more favorable orbit. Okay, so with that being said, just a few small channel updates. Uh, we are continuing with the KSP Interplanetary Voyage of Exploration. Uh, this I have just come back from my vacation uh, in the summer, so um, this is the first episode that I already recorded before the vacation, but on only now I had time to record the audio for it. So, what has changed? Uh, nothing much. I will continue posting Interplanetary Voyage, because apparently you guys like it a lot. Uh, I've been thinking a little bit about uh, the 113 series, and um, I'd like to ask you guys plain for a feedback, because... I have been getting some comments, for example, and no, career would be nice, and I was thinking also of posting additional uh, my own tech tree, but sadly this has taken more time than I would like to admit, and I'm not sure if I continue pressing onwards if I'll have um, the tech tree ready within the next at least two months. It will still take me a lot of balancing, and I have very little time to actually do so. So I've been thinking... Either I post a 113 playthrough career, starting from scratch, or I'm thinking actually of uh, uh, just making an interplanetary voyage season 2, where I would be basically just using a bunch of mods that I've been using so far, except for the tech tree, which hasn't been ported, at least not to my knowledge, uh, in terms of Adios tech tree. And I would probably then take either an alternative tech tree or I would basically just use sandbox uh, with most of the techs uncovered after I have most of the uncovered most of them here. And uh, then basically continue where this series is leaving off, which would be somewhere around Duna colonization, late exploration and onwards, because that would give me an opportunity to actually use 113, which is more stable and not crashing every five minutes, affecting my sanity. And also for you guys that I'm not basically starting all over, but rather just continuing the series and going deeper into the colonization, etc., etc., which I think it would be the best approach forward when we come to the KSP. I will, of course, continue the mod spotlight, uh, and I will... Probably, not since now that No Man's Sky is out, I want to just give it a try. I know that a lot of people had like positive and negative reviews and comments, but I really want to give it a go and see for my own opinion. Now, uh, for you naval action fans, I have a special treat for you coming soon. Hopefully, and it will have something of a tutorial towards manual sales. I will reveal more details as we come closer to it. Um, so, that's pretty much the channel update. Please do let me know what you think in the comments below. Uh, should I just go from scratch with a fresh model list and go for a career save? Or should I make Interplanetary Voyage Season 2 with more intricate ships and more cool stuff? I was thinking maybe even some cooler stuff. Rovers from new series from Rover Dude look, looks amazing. A little bit deeper into bases and stuff, etc, etc. Please, anyway, let me know what you think uh, in the comments and I'll try to oblige. Um, okay. Now, let us just continue. As you can see, I'm trying to create an asteroid mover. Anyway, a ship that would be big and beefy enough to be able to move the asteroid to an orbit that I would prefer. So, I'm just now creating basically this uh, 
big lump of a ship and I want it to be very powerful and I want also for it to be maneuverable. So last time when we did, I did attach a bunch of uh, things, um, a bunch of RCS thrusters and I managed to move it into a semi-stable semi orbit, but I want to obviously improve and put it into something more usable. And that's why this ship has this crazy design and I'm trying to see how much thrust will I get and I'm hoping that I will be able to thrust through the center of mass. That still however remains to be seen. Now, um, I'll give it that ship is a strange design and it's massive so I'm trying to figure out what would be the best way how to actually put this into a, either a fairing or just basically strap on some boosters behind. Probably it will be the latter. Now, let's see if we can stack up a rocket below. Um, <laughs> actually, let me give it a look. I, I still want to take a look whether or not I should be putting like procedural fairings. After all, we didn't uncover them for nothing, so let's see, 5 meter if I put a fairing and then let's see how would the egg-shaped fairing look like. Let's see. Wow, beautiful. Don't you guys just love it? I thought as much. Uh, okay. <laughs> Let's see how would the rocket beneath it look. Oh guys, this 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 is just too funny. Anyway, let's let let's let's continue with it. See what it looks like in the end. Hmm. Two SAS units, definitely we need enough SAS oomph to be able to turn this and then 6000 delta V. Oh, 8,000. Okay, that's more like it, but still, I think it's too little. I need a little bit more tanks, so... Mm, not really much gain, and the thrust to weight is a bit low-ish. So... Shall we stick to the traditional Kerbal design? More boosters. I think so. I think that would be the good approach, so let me see. Four of them? Mm, possibly. Mm, yes, now we're talking. Okay, <clears throat> and then we want to be putting four engines and we will be putting the rhinos. And let's see, now let's put them in a group, and now we are talking 1.80 uh, thrust to weight maximum at, at blast off, which is decent. Then let's put these um, onion staging and some rocket fins to put the ship's center of lift for as far back as possible. And yeah, I think this looks pretty viable. So let's just strut the damn thing all together. And um, yeah, I think I would like to give it a go. Hmm. Where is now my remote tech antenna? There you go. And. Let's just put it to activate and I'm thinking, did I forget anything? Probably not. Oh yeah, the control antenna for the ascent. I usually tend to forget that from time to time and it's not the most fun thing. Okay, let's fix our staging. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I think so, let's build a vessel. I don't think we need to simulate it, I just need to we think we need to build it and launch it.
Okay. Let's warp until it's done and then let us we have some time to burn and then let's think about the sciencer because once we move it I also want whilst we this will be in a mission I also want to build a sciencer craft. So yeah this episode might be a little bit more heavy on the construction but then again, the next episode should be heavier on the flight. Now, we want parachutes, we want a lander can, and we want, I'm thinking, uh, four radial attached chutes, and I would like to put the claw on the top, probably, just to be able to dock with an asteroid. Mm. But actually, the claw on the top doesn't sound that much fun now, does it? Because if it's on the top, the cosmonaut or kerbonaut will be facing backwards. And that doesn't make a lot of sense now, does it? Hmm. Let's see if we can dock uh, vertically. So, <clears throat> that might require some unconventional design, but um, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, let me see if I can find life support container. Great. Then um, waste container. <clears throat> Obviously we don't want to have poop in space. We want it nicely collected and then disposed of in orderly fashion. Mm, what else, what else, what else? Some batteries, obviously. Hoo hoo hoo, where do we put those? Do we have another batteries that are smaller? I mean, we don't need that much. <clears throat> Let's see. I think they are towards the back, but... Ah, yeah. Here they are. Let's just see with this one. And I would like to avoid building too high of a stack, but then again, what can you do? Okay. Radial supply tanks, no, not really. Hmm. Extractor, I was in th even thinking some drills to see if we can drill something from the asteroid. After all, we have just started to go into the carbonite, so I was thinking maybe we could put the carbonite drill, but um, this first mission, I think we need to take one thing at a time, so it's better that we just focus on sciencing this thing out. <laughs> Where are you? I am... <laughs> looking for hold on no 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 <clears throat> man I have too many mods and too many parts clearly and I haven't still yet unlocked the full tech tree so ah there you are this is like a place where I can actually put quad Quad couple stuff and RCS fuel tank, fine. <clears throat> and then I'll be putting science experiments on all four sides of it. Yes, I think that would be the good approach. So, solar particle collector, one orbital telescope, sure. Then we have you, then we have RPWS antenna. Press mag magnetometer. What would we do without it? Obviously. Accelerometer and grab max. And where are you? <clears throat> Atmospheric sensor. Or what was the other one that I want to put? Well, no matter. Let's put it like that. I'm pretty sure we might science something out. And then we have science micro which is like the science bay and then we might have a mystery goose somewhere I think 
Where are you? Ah, there you are. Mini mystery goose, because now we have in researched miniaturization, so these experiments don't need to be that big. Dynamic albedo of neutrons. I have no idea what that is, but we'll take it. Then we want to have the drill. X Kerbal Core Drill. Perfect. What else can we take over the experiments? Um, tu -tu -tu. Mm -hmm. Oops, wrong side. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, there you go. And then on the fourth side, we need one more experiment. What shall we put? Uh, surface analyzer, because we can. Okay, time to put some, I guess, some landing legs. We have these landing struts, which I think will work fine. Or shall we put the bigger ones? Maybe the bigger ones would be make it more stable. Hmm, okay. Now, that thing being said, we have forgotten one thing. Well, <laughs> propulsion. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So, how do we fix that? Yeah, let's let's see if we can put <coughs> decouplers. But let's put it like this, radial stack decoupler. And then we want to be putting the engines here on the sides. So, the fuel tanks and the engines. I think that would be a good approach. Like that. And the engine, I would like to use these two, please. Yes. I think that would work fine. Maybe with a little bit bigger tank. Oh, could I put sabers? Nah, why would I want to put sabers? A little bit bigger tank and engines. Yes, perfect. It will be a little bit harder to reach the experiments, but who cares? <clears throat> okay. Asteroid lander. So the question is, why would I want to keep the bottom free? And the answer is very, very simple, because I want to be putting the claw on it. I just have to find it first. Oh, RTGs. Yeah, because we can't live without them. Oh boy, come on. Here. Great. So, two RTGs, which will be powering this whole thing, and something like this. Make it an ugly bugger cap. Okay. <laughs> so, that would be a lander. I'm thinking I'll just apply settings here. Should be good enough, I guess. Okay. <laughs> and where did I put the claw? It should be under utility if I'm not mistaken, right? Ah, there we are, advanced gr grabbing unit. And now let's put it on the bottom. So, <clears throat> perfect. That's the idea. When the claw deploys, that we just stick this guy to the asteroid, and that should be it. Hopefully. So, now we need to find a way how to get this bad boy into space. And that will be a tricky one. So, let's put these two decouplers here. Then I'm planning to put two fuel tanks. And then... Hmm, <laughs> this will be a little bit tougher not to crack. Now, we need SAS, great. And we will also need RCS a little bit, because we do want to have RCS control over things. Well, let me just put the RCS units a little bit above. I mean, we don't need docking-wise precision, but, you know, I try to be perfectionist so that I can actually align them nicely. Okay, 
Well, I think that's good enough. Oh, come on. Oh, did I make a boo-boo just now? Hmm, probably did. Let's undo. No symmetry like this, and I'm just putting the experiments slightly lower. And I could have just used the gizmos rather than just detaching and attaching, but yeah. I realized that only a little bit later. Um, okay, I guess. And now let's see how we will handle these... Getting this bad boy into orbit in the first place. Okay, so... Get those here, and I'm thinking, well, this one will be actually very hard to get into the orbit in the first place because I have no idea how to attach from the bottom these two. But uh, I have an idea. So let's think about it this way why don't we launch it upside down? And I'm thinking that just might be the best case, actually. <laughs> so, rather than making it land upside down, we'll just launch the poor Kerbal upside down. But we want to put the ladder, obviously. Okay, so... Mark 1, and now we're adding the lifter. <clears throat> so... Uh, that pretty much means we have to flip the craft upside down, like this. <clears throat> and the problem is now that the root part doesn't have the top component any longer, so I cannot attach it, or can I? Hmm, maybe I can. Let's try again, shall we? Mm-hmm. Aerodynamics, fairing base, and it really, really doesn't want... And I think maybe I've gotten it, I'm not sure. Uh, even bigger fairing? Hmm, yeah, that could work. So let's put a cone on top of it. Beautiful! It would actually work! Awesome! Great, now let's just put some uh, rocket underneath that and then we will probably be launching that bad boy. Yes, because launching Kerbals upside down is totally viable. They love being flipped. So, let's put another engine, hold on. Another fuel tank and another engine. I think let's keep this part simple, shall we? So I want to have a rocket that has a lot of oomph and not too many complications. So this would be the upper stage. I think I, I was thinking first to have a single stage, but in hindsight maybe it's better to have upper stage. So then let's just put another like this. Yeah, that might do it. Or just put this one and have it single stage. 1659. <clears throat> well, I think that would be doable. Let's just see how do we fix the staging. These two guys separate, these two guys separate. And I think that should work. Then let's put the winglets down. I mean, no really point of co over complicating things now, should we? Let's just put SAS unit and what else? What else do? Oh, am I forgetting something? It will be flown by a Kerbal, so we don't need it. Let's just put some photovoltaic panels so that we do have some power. Set the action group to extend them. Perfect. Save. And, 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 and. Hmm. 6.5.8, I think that's enough. Delta V, so let's put the launch clamps at the center of mass. Perfect. And uh, 
What else? Let's just strut the whole thing. Oh, careful. Easy does it. Hmm. It doesn't want. Well, what about if I take the outer ones? Yeah, those would work. Well, as long as it's properly strutted, we don't have to care. Great. Okay, and I think we should just build it. We don't need to simulate it now, do we? I definitely don't think so. So, add it to the build queue. Fantastic. Now we have a lander that is being built and still, as you can see, we have plenty of time until our carbonite miner comes into the orbit around Duna. So I thought it would be, you know, a handy stuff to do something while the carbonite miner is on its way to Duna rather than just speed through it. Uh, okay, and perfect. So we have the mover, we have the lander, and let's just go and... I guess we should launch the asteroid transporter now, should we? Okay, roll out. Four hours to complete, and we are once again on the night side. So I think we should basically just launch it. <clears throat> so, VAB and launch. And at this point the game decided to crash on me, so I had to reload, but rest assured, I launched this bad boy. So I'm just now trying to see to get the asteroid which is somewhere over here, correctly aligned. So, correctly aligned with Kerbin, come on, please, rotate, rotate, will ya? And I think we are... The good thing about Remote Tech is that it shows me exactly where KSC is, and that helps me align the orbits. Perfect! So I think let's put the SAS on and three, two, one, go. Booster ignited and we have a liftoff. Let's slowly turn this craft to its desired orbit. I'm trying to go slightly to the north. And I'm hoping this would be the correct trajectory for it. I'm not 100% sure, but we'll try to go that way. Separating booster. And oh boy, oh boy. Ladies and gentlemen, we have space confetti. So much for my asteroid mover. Well, I guess, what is a KSP without some space confetti? Right, guys? Well, let's just see how these guys land. Yeah. So, I can assure you this was definitely not planned, but, you know, it happens. Anyway, guys, uh, in the next episode, I think I will be focusing on rather launching the Sciencer because this one is too complicated to fix. So I'll just launch the Sciencer and do the science from the inclined orbit. So with that thing in mind, I'd like to thank you guys for watching. And like if you like, hit subscribe and see you in the next episode. Thanks again. This is Gromforks signing off.